नमस्ते एवरीवन आई एम ज्ञान एंड यू आर वाचिंग द सेशन 4 ऑफ जावा एंड वेव मेथड्स एज फ्लो ऑफ कंट्रोल इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न अबाउट द कांसेप्ट ऑफ रिकर्शन वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन अ मेथड कैन कॉल अदर मेथड्स नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज कैन अ मेथड कॉल इटसेल्फ द आंसर इज यस दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड रिकर्शन व्हेन अ मेथड कॉल्स इटसेल्फ देन दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड रिकर्शन अ सेपरेट स्टेक फ्रेम विल बी क्रिएटेड फॉर ईच इंस्टेंस ऑफ द मेथड व्हेन अ मेथड कॉल्स इटसेल्फ देन फॉर एवरी न्यू कॉल अ न्यू स्टेक फ्रेम विल बी क्रिएटेड ऑन द स्टैक In this program, we are calculating factorial of the variable i. We are passing the variable i as the actual argument to the method called fact, and here the method fact is calling itself as recursion. You can see here in the definition of method fact, we are calling the fact method itself. So let's see how this program calculates factorial of a number using animation. Various memory areas are created in the JVM, and one of them is a stack. Execution starts from the method main. and the stack frame for the method main is created on the stack the location for the local variable args has been created which contains address of something what type of address is contained by the variable args we will see about it in later session in the next statement we are defining a new variable integer i is equal to 3 so the location for the integer i has been created on the stack frame of main and 32 bit binary of 3 has been stored in that location in this statement we are about to call the method fact with the actual argument i So whatever will be returned by the fact i, that is fact three, will be stored in this variable. So whatever will be returned by the fact i, that is fact three, will be stored in this location. Will be stored in the variable f. After calling the method fact with the actual argument three, the method main has to pause itself, and the stack frame of the fact gets created. Remember that this stack frame gets created by calling the method fact with the actual argument three. So the method fact with the actual argument three starts execution. In this case the value of i is 3 because the actual argument i in the method call gets copied into the formal argument i of the method definition. In next line we check is i is equal to 0 or is i is equal to 1. Both conditions are false. So the body of the if will not execute and control comes to this statement. This statement multiplies the current value of i that is 3. Here current value of i is 3. So current value of i that is 3 gets multiplied with the return value of the method fact when called with the actual argument i minus 1 gets multiplied with the called method fact with the actual argument i minus 1 since current value of i is 3 so the actual argument here is 2 so you can see here the fact with the actual argument 3 now calls the fact again with the actual argument 2 so a new stack frame will be created for the fact with the actual argument 2 now the fact with actual argument 3 is actually waiting for the fact with actual argument 2 to return its value so method fact with the actual argument 3 gets paused and the stack frame of fact with the actual argument 2 gets created now the execution of the method fact for the actual argument 2 starts again so here you can see the fact is calling fact fact with actual argument 3 is calling the fact with actual argument 2 again we check if the current value of i that is 2 is equal to 0 or equal to 1 the answer is no i is neither equal to 0 nor equal to 1 so the body of the if statement will not execute and the control comes to this statement now the method fact with the actual argument 2 needs to call the method fact again with the actual argument i minus 1 the current value of i is 2 here so the method fact with actual argument 2 calls the method fact with the actual argument 1 and that call will be multiplied with the current value of i that is 2 because of the call to fact 1 the fact with actual argument 2 pauses itself and a new stack frame of the fact with the actual argument 1 will be created in this case the value of i is 1 so again we are checking if i is equal to 0 or i is equal to 1 in this case i is equal to 1 so condition is true now that's how the body of the if statement will execute and the method fact with the actual argument 1 will return 1 to its caller the method fact with the actual argument 2 was the caller of the method fact with the actual argument 1 So the method fact with actual argument one will return the value one to the caller. That's how the method fact with the actual argument two gets the value one returned by the fact one. So the value one returned by the fact with actual argument one to the fact with the actual argument two. After returning the value, the stack frame for the fact with actual argument one gets erased. And here, since the value returned by the call fact one is one. so we can write 2 multiplied by 1 instead of 2 multiplied by fact 1 the result of 2 multiplied by 1 is 
if you remember that while calling the fact 2 method we were here our control were in this line i is equal to i into fact i minus 1 so after the method fact with the actual argument 2 resumes it needs to continue its execution so next statement to be executed by the fact with the actual argument 2 after this statement is the return i the caller of the method fact with actual argument 2 is the method fact with the actual argument 3 so the method fact with actual argument 2 will return the value of the variable i to its caller after returning its value the stack frame of the method fact with the actual argument 2 will be erased from the stack and the method fact with the actual argument 3 resumes its execution we know that the method fact with the actual argument 3 was paused at this statement so next statement be executed by the method fact with the actual argument 3 is return i that's how the method fact with the actual argument 3 will return its variable i to the caller and the caller of the method fact with the actual argument 3 is the method main so the value 6 will be returned to the caller main after returning the value of the variable i the stack frame of the fact with the actual argument 3 gets erased from the stack and method main resume itself the value returned by the fact i is now 6 has been stored in the variable f and this 6 is the result of the factorial 3 ultimately we calculated 1 into 2 into 3 so the method main resumes itself method main was paused after calling the method fact with the actual argument 3 so the next statement to be executed by the method main is the system dot out dot print ln value of variable f we know that the value of variable f is now 6 so the method main prints 6 after printing the variable f the stack frame of the main gets erased from the stack and that's how the execution of bytecode comes to an end and jvm has to stop let me try to execute this code in a java program open fact.java and this is the same code we are passing the variable i which contains 3 in it and finally the fact type will return the factorial 3. The value returned by the fact type we are storing in the integer variable f and finally we are printing the integer variable f. Let me save and compile this code. Java C fact.java compiles fine then run it. Java fact it runs fine in printing 6 because 1 into 2 into 3 is equal to 6. Let me try to calculate factorial of 5. Let's write here 5 directly. Pass the integer literal 5 as actual argument. Let me save and compile it. Java C fact.java compiles fine, then run it. It runs fine and printing factorial of 5, that is 120. Sometimes recursion may cause overflow of stack memory and so runtime error. You can see here the method main is calling the same method main. So what will happen here for the first time the stack frame of main gets created on the stack. Then after main is calling main itself. So for the stack frame of the newly called main by main again will be created on the stack and this activity will be continued until the stack memory will be completely filled by the various stack frames of the main. You can see here in the previous program we had a way to stop calling the method fact in a given situation. That means when i was 0 or 1 we need to stop calling the method fact. But in this case we do not have any way to stop calling the method main. So it will keep on calling itself until the stack memory will be completely filled by the various stack frames of the method main. That's how the Java in this case will throw a runtime error stack overflow. So whenever you are using the recursion you must have a situation where the method in the recursion stops calling itself. Otherwise the Java will throw a runtime error stack overflow. So let me try to execute this code in a Java program. Open recursion.java and this is the code. Since here the main has a formal argument of type string array. So while calling the method main you must have to pass either the variable of string array or null as an actual argument to the method call. Let me save and compile this code. Java C recursion.java compiles fine then run it. For some time it prints main 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 and then cause an error. Let me save the error output on the different file. Write Java recursion type here 2 give greater than sign and name name of the file where you want to save the error i want to save the error on different file whose name is output and let's type output.txt if you are programming in windows then you must have to write the file name as output.txt otherwise it will not open for you but if you are using linux 
then you can name the file as output only the extension is not compulsory so i want to set the error on the external file whose name is output.txt press enter it prints main 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 for some time and then comes to an end of course we can find the runtime errors on the file name output.txt so open output.txt and this is the runtime exception exception in thread main java.lang.stack overflow error the javian says there was an exception and name of that exception was java.lang.stack overflow error we will see about all the exceptions in java in the separate session of java and web so here it has been written for some moment it prints main main and then stops in this case the execution will start from the method main and the method main is calling the method fun the method fun is printing fun and then calling the method fun again in this case we do not have any way to stop method fun from calling itself so in this case the method fun will keep on calling itself until the stack memory will be filled by the various stack frames of the method fun and in this case the java will also throw the stack overflow error for some moment it prints fun and then it stops this is a task for you to execute this code in a java program that's all for this video guys don't forget to like and share this video subscribe this channel if you are new and leave your valuable comments in the comment section below thanks for watching see you in the next video